All right, good morning, class. Um, here we're going to look at um, this uh, problem set of probabilities with um, a bistro here, Fallon's Bistro, and we have uh, uh, all American breakfast choices, is what this is called. So we got you know some eggs, okay, fried, scrambled, poached. We got some meat, bacon, ham, and sausage, and then we got breads, toast, uh, Italian, wheat, and white. Okay, so a couple of observations of they've done the tree diagram for us here. Okay, so three choices is egg, three choices is meat, three choices is bread. Okay, so uh, what do you notice about the percentages attached to the choices in the tree diagram? Well, what we noticed is that if you look at just the eggs, you've got 0 0.42, 0 0.36, 0 0.22, all right? These are not equal. All right, before when we had our tree diagram with the uh, with the sandwich menu and then uh, the one with the pumpkin, uh, we have we had three choices. So this is one out of three chance, one out of three chance, one out of three chance. But that's not what this is saying. All right, if they were one third, this would be something we call equally likely outcomes. And what these decimals are showing us is that they're not equal. Okay, we don't have exactly the same amount of people choosing scrambled eggs and poached eggs. All right, so this is a probability chart of not equally likely chances or events. All right, so when we have a sample space, um, basically each choice in the sample space is not equal. All right, if you look at the uh, question for B, if you leave the choices and change their percentages, what does this do to the sample space? So when I talked about sample space, let's say here's a sample space of eggs. All right. Um, if I changed one of these, okay, um, that means the others would have to change. All right, so what is true about the sum of the probabilities of each outcome in the sample space? Well, let's see, and kind of answering B, uh, they kind of go together. All right, so if we look at our sample space of eggs, uh, what do we know about them? So if we take the 0.42 plus 0.36 plus the uh, 0.22, all right, what we're gonna notice is they add up to one. Or if you look at them as percentages, by moving the decimal to the right, to uh, two decimal places, add those up, you get 100%. So every sample space must add up to one. If you look at the bacon, same thing. 75 plus 15 plus 10 equals 100% or one if you're using the decimals. All right, so each sample space should add up to that. So if you change the percentages on one, you've got to adjust the percentages to the other to make that 100%. So remember, your probability is from zero to one, okay, and anything else in between, okay? So I've noticed in some of the assignments uh, from the other day, that uh, some of y'all were getting probabilities of like 22. Okay, no, <laughs> there's something clearly wrong there. It has to be between zero and one, guys, okay? Um, <clears throat> let's see here. Uh, so uh, basically they all add up to one. Okay. All right, how many combinations of the American breakfast are possible? Explain your reasoning. All right, well, if we look at the tree diagram, okay, um, leaving the percentages out, okay, we've got three eggs, 
we've got three choices of meats and then three choices of Italian toast. So what you can do is you can take each choice, each uh, sample space, and multiply by the number of choices within each. Okay. Or if you have a tree diagram, you can count the end tree here and get all the uh, uh, different combinations. It depends on how the tree diagram is uh, set up. Okay. So uh, sometimes they can be inverted the other way. So that's not too reliable. But you just look at your choices. So you got three choices of egg. Right, times three choices of meat, times three choices of uh, toast, okay, which is basically the same thing as three cubed, three times three times three, which is 27 outcomes. All right, so they're just interested in how many different combinations of egg, uh, meat, and toast we can have. All right, so now to do some probabilities with the uh, the unequal thing. So um, you are going to need uh, the blank copy of these notes will be provided. You are going to need this tree to help you uh, do the uh, problems coming forward or have a second copy of this opened in your window. So just press the edit button twice and then you'll have two copies of this. Though I don't think I'm going to give it to you as a Google form, but you will need uh, the blank form of that tree diagram. All right, so what is the probability that the next order of the American breakfast is fried eggs, bacon, and Italian toast? Okay, where on the tree diagrams is outcome indicated? All right, explain the reason. So what we're gonna do is use our tree diagram because it has the probabilities for us. So this is what we're trying to figure out. We wanna know the probability of a fried egg, um, choosing bacon, and Italian uh, toast. All right, so let's look at our tree. All right, so probability of getting a fried egg, uh, a customer choosing fried eggs is 0.42, or you want to look at the percentages, 42%. Okay, so where do they come from? Well, how do these numbers come about? Well, it can be simply the computer systems in your store for every customer that makes an order. Okay, they can see what you've ordered, and they can determine the customers between a certain amount of time, let's say the day or that breakfast period, this many customers chose fried eggs, this many scrambled eggs, this many poached eggs. Okay, all those add up to all the customers of that day, 100% of the customers of that day. So when you break down how much each got, they're gonna be different numbers. And as their breakdown went, uh, they had 42% of the customers that came in ordered fried eggs. So this is where data is important. This is where companies are extremely important on what um, their consumers are into or buying. Okay, so everywhere people are hungry for data um even if you look at uh netflix where they uh there's a i forget the name of the show is called it talks about social media like what pictures are you looking at how long are you looking at them for um what kind of searches are you putting it takes all that information and it knows okay more than likely you're interested in buying a car and the next thing you know in all your social media you get these ads of like this certain car that you're looking to buy all right so uh, I'm sure you've noticed that, like, man, how did they know I was looking for, you know, some a Toyota? Well, <clears throat> you were searching for Toyotas or talking about it with somebody in the friend, and it picks up on all that. All right, so that's basically what this is. Um, so uh, companies want data like this so they can run analysis like what we're doing to figure out, okay, uh, I should keep this much uh, toast on hand, you know, or this much bacon, or we sell this much. Uh, people aren't buying this. Should we even bother serving this in the menu anymore? All right. Um, uh, the founder, okay, the one about uh, McDonald's, where they used to, they used to be a, a drive-in, and uh, I guess the McDonald's brothers um, were serving all kinds of stuff, and then what they've noticed was that people were only ordering certain menu items. So they cut all that out, okay, and boom, it's hamburgers, fries, and, and and shakes. And that's that's what they sold. And it became a big hit, and we have McDonald's, as you know, today. Little other things happened, but great movie also on Netflix. Netflix. All right, so it's back to the question. All right, so we're going to figure out these probabilities, right? So, um, you know, I talked about how these sample spaces, when you're going vertically, okay, they add up to one. You add vertically. But when you move horizontally this way, OK, 
okay, across the tree from branch to branch, you're going to multiply. All right, so a probability of a fried egg right here at this one, um, and probably the choosing bacon, okay, right here at this choice is where we multiply from choosing bacon. And then Italian toast, again, we're multiplying across branches. Multiply here, we get 0 0.60. All right, and those are the numbers we're going to use to figure out the probability of a customer on that day would have picked this certain combination. All right, so let's do just that. So probability of a fried egg is uh, 0.42, okay, times um, probability of choosing bacon, 0.75. Times check that 0.75. Okay, oh, okay. And uh, probability of choosing Italian toast, which is 0 0.60. All right. So we multiply all that together, we're going to get 0.189. All right. And that's about 0.19 probability, or you can say 19%. Uh, all right. And this would be our result of choosing that combination. All right. Let's look at another one. What is the probability that the next order of the all-American breakfast will not be scrambled eggs, bacon, and Italian toast? Okay, so um, I'll explain our reasoning here. So probability of not um, scrambled eggs, not bacon, and not Italian toast. Okay, not those things. All right, so what we're gonna simply do if we look at the bacon, here, um, yeah, no. all right. So, uh, yeah, let's look at the look at the meats, like the bacon, ham, and cheese. So, if we're saying not bacon, what we're basically doing is we're excluding that, okay? And we're just looking at what are what is our, what is our choice of choosing the other two meats? And what we're going to have to do is again combine these together because we're basically interested in anything but the bacon. So, what's the probability of choosing ham or sausage is what they're saying. Okay, so that's what we're going to do here. And there's a couple ways we can do it. And then here's one. All right, so we can take um, the probability of non scrambled eggs, which is 0.42, okay, which is the fried egg, uh, plus the 0.22, which is the uh, poached egg. Okay, then multiply the next sample space, which is the meat so times uh not the bacon right so we have ham 0.15 that's our ham plus uh the sausage 0.10 for sausage okay then times our next sample speech which is the uh other toast all right not italian toast so we have 0.25 for the uh wheat plus 0.17 for the other both W, so I'll just write white for the white toast. Okay, so basically what we're going to do is we're going to have we're going to add these two together, then multiply out. So we get uh, for the other eggs we get 0.64 um, times the other meats 0.25 times the other toast 0 0.40, and then we get um, 0 0.064. All right which is about, four is not enough to round up, so 0 0.06 or 6%, okay.